All right, think back with me for a moment. Say like 10 years back. 10 years ago today, do you remember exactly what you were doing? I definitely don't, and neither do most people. We might vaguely remember what life was like, but most of our daily memories from that long ago are just gone. Still, some psychoanalysts would argue that you might have uncomfortable memories from that day hiding in the back of your mind waiting to be rediscovered, also known as repressed memories. That used to be a really popular idea, but now we know that these memories aren't always what they seem. The idea of repressed memories is sometimes thrown around in pop psychology, but it has a pretty specific definition. For one, a repressed memory isn't something you just haven't thought about for years, like your first elementary school art project. And it's also not just like forgetting something, like how you probably can't remember what you had for breakfast three weeks ago. I can't remember what I had for breakfast this morning. The real idea of a repressed memory comes from everybody's favorite misguided psychoanalyst, Sigmund Freud. His idea was that if you have thoughts or experiences that you don't want to deal with consciously, like memories of being abused, they'd get pushed into your unconscious mind. And Freud argued that everyone has all kinds of desires, motivations, and memories just waiting to be uncovered. Back around the 1980s, it was common for therapists who were into Freud's ideas to suspect that their patients had repressed memories of trauma or abuse, but unfortunately, some therapists might have been a bit overzealous in finding trauma when it wasn't actually there. Many used guided imagery techniques with their patients like imagining what a hypothetical abuse scenario might look like to help them recall those supposedly hidden memories, which sounds horrible and today isn't seen as a useful therapy for dealing with abuse. Aside from sounding just pretty unpleasant, it also looked a lot like how you can create false memories. Sometimes people can be bad at distinguishing their real memories from things that they just imagined happening to them. Like if you think that you remember something from when you were a baby because your family has told that story a bunch of times. So telling people to imagine experiences makes them more likely to misremember them as true. For patients who had been abused, it was great that therapists were finally acknowledging how common it was and taking them seriously. But if a patient comes to your office saying that they've never been abused, you definitely don't want to accidentally convince them that they were. Thanks to that imagery technique, it's likely that many supposedly repressed memories from around then were actually just things suggested by well-meaning therapists, and research supports that idea. Some studies have shown that people who believe they've recovered repressed memories are more likely to get false memories. For example, in a paper published in 2000 in Psychological Science, researchers studied 57 women. Some had always remembered abuse from earlier in their lives, but others had either supposedly recovered memories of abuse or suspected that they had repressed memories. They had all of these people and a control group, people who knew they had never been abused, take a memory test. It involved remembering lists of related words, and in other research, most people end up creating false memories and accidentally remembering words that aren't on the list. The results showed that people who had always remembered their traumatic memories were about as likely as the control group to have false memories of the the missing words. But those who had recovered memories were about 20% more likely to have false memories from the lists. And this phenomenon happens with more significant events too, not only word lists. One study published in 1999 in the Journal of Traumatic Stress looked at 24 people and found that they could induce false memories of some unusual life events, like breaking a window with your hand or getting stuck in a tree. They did this using the same guided imagery technique that therapists would use in finding recovered memories. Another study from 1989 surveyed about 130 children whose school was attacked by a shooter. Several children remembered being at the scene of the shooting, but weren't actually anywhere near it. One boy even remembered walking to school, turning back when he heard the shots, and seeing someone lying on the ground. Except, his parents confirmed that they were on vacation that day. Now, it's important to remember that all of this research is correlational. No one researches repressed memories by randomly assigning some people to experience trauma to test their memory of it. So we can't say repressed memories are always false. But we do know that it's really hard to demonstrate that they're reliable, and for most people it's really easy to get a false memory. Without corroborating evidence, it can be hard to distinguish a true, recovered memory from a false one. Still, when it comes to trauma and abuse, most people have continuous memories of it, so it's important to take them seriously. And even if someone can't prove their repressed memories are real, having traumatic, troubling, or stressful thoughts is a good reason to talk to a professional anyway. No matter how much the internet and TV shows have to say about repressed memories, like most of Freud's ideas, they are definitely not as straightforward as they sound. Thank you for watching this episode of SciShow Psych. For more on the science of memory, you can check out our video about how your memory can be tricked.